All right, YouTube, welcome back. So, uh, today is the night before my first bank fishing tournament. Uh, I've actually never done a bank fishing tournament. I've been in other fishing tournaments, but never a bank fishing tournament. Uh, I'm pretty actually excited about this. It's some place that I've only been to one time before. When I was there, I figured something out. Don't know if that's gonna hold true this week, but it worked out last week. So hopefully, it'll work out for us again. Uh, I'm gonna actually run you guys through how I'm gonna get ready, how I'm gonna prep my tackle and my backpack for a back fishing tournament. Bank fishing tournament, blah, blah, whatever. Um, it's totally different than fishing from a bass boat. A bass boat, you have all of your rods, you have all of your tackle. Here, you're limited to a few rods and your backpack. Let's jump into what I'm gonna be taking with me and how I'm gonna rig up these rods to hopefully do the best I can tomorrow. Okay, first. specifically going to take four rods. I have two with heavy braid, one with eight pound mono, one with six pound mono. The reason I have it kind of set up for this, that I've got basically two top water rigs that I'm going to run tomorrow. Uh, I am going to throw this rod here, which is my Black Max combo rod, but I've thrown on the KingCast Royal Legend Reel. Uh, this is going to be 45 pound braid, so this is going to work out really good for my Whopper Plopper. Uh, that I'm going to be throwing tomorrow. There's a specific bank tomorrow that I'm going to be fishing right off the bat, and you're going to see that here in a little bit. For tomorrow, this is my starting bait right across. Uh, there's a rock bank. I'm going to show you guys that tomorrow as well, that this is where I'm going to be throwing first. Now, something I'm going to be doing because this is a bank fishing tournament, there are these little um, lure covers. It's not so much just for keeping my lures kind of secret of what I'm throwing, but I definitely don't want uh, everyone knowing exactly what I'm throwing right off the bat. So I'm gonna be covering it up with one of these lure covers. It also actually really, really helps with keeping your rods from getting all tangled. And when I get there, I can just pull them out and I don't have anything to worry about. So this rod is already preset and ready to go for tomorrow. Next, this is going to be the, lure, the rod I probably use the most tomorrow, and I'm starting off tomorrow with an Azera Spook on it. This is what I'm going to use as my follow-up to the Whopper Plopper. If I get any kind of blow-ups, if I get any kind of swirls, I'm going to go back in with this. It's a little bit smaller. It's got a little bit more subtle presentation because it doesn't have that big whopping blade. Uh, I can kind of work this a little bit slower. This is the other lure that I'm going to specifically cover up with one of two that I have. Uh, I don't have more than two covers, unfortunately, or I would probably cover all of my rods, uh, just so people don't know exactly what I'm throwing tomorrow. But again, it helps cover up my lures, not just for the sake of keeping it hidden, although I hate secrets when it comes to fishing and stuff like that, but when you're in a tournament, every bit counts. Uh, this is my Okuma TCS rod, uh, six nine medium heavy uh, with the Okuma Helios reel. Uh, I absolutely adore this combo. It is my absolute favorite. This is the seven point three to one. Um, this is my favorite rod in my entire set. Um, Scott Martin, you're a hero to me. This is glorious. Uh, I can yank fish out of it. Up north, we don't have the monster fish that everybody else has, so I don't need a thousand different rods for different techniques. Um, this is a very universal rod that I can use for everything. Uh, so huge, fantastic dealio here. Now the other two rods, I have one of two of them set up already, but I might change this out. This is going to be the uh, Okuma Citrix rod with the uh, Daiwa, uh, I believe this is the SS Tournament. Uh, this rod and reel is newer. I do have the, this same reel that's 20 something years old. 
uh, and it looks identical. This brand new one looks identical to the one that's 20 years old and works almost identically. They, the technology in these has changed almost none in 20 something years because they're that good. So for my finesse fishing, this is what I'm gonna go with. If I need to throw a worm, I'm gonna change and switch it onto this. If I need to throw something lighter, something finesse -y, maybe a finesse jig, something like that, I'm also gonna throw it on this. Uh, but I'm gonna start off with a moving bait. Uh, this is a standard chatterbait, Z-Man chatterbait. This is gonna be my cover ground lure for when it comes a little bit later in the day and I have to start moving around in my first or in second spots are either been fished out or I've fished them out. Since it's only a one day tournament, you can abuse your spots a little bit more. If this was a two or three day tournament, you're gonna to leave some fish in there and come back again later to get those fish. But since it's not one of those, I'm gonna bleed every spot dry uh, with the best ability that I can. So this is how this is gonna stay set up. Again, this is only six pound mono. Uh, the water's not super clear. I kind of wish I had something heavier on this, but for a lot of the finesse fishing, this is going to do just fine. I'm not going to run into any six or seven or eight pounders up here. And even if I did, I should still be able to get them in on six pound mono. My last combo here, which is the portion I'm going to change out. This is my Abu Garcia Black Max Reel with my favorite white bird. Uh, this is a 6'6". Six, six, um, medium heavy and this is one of my other favorite rods uh, not just for the name haha but uh, this is a really good feel rod so for me I can put a lot of lighter stuff on here I can get a really good feel with it and when I feel a fish hit it boy this is thing boing uh, <laughs> boing that's a good one uh, when a fish hits it I can really feel it the tip really goes um, so but right now I just have a basic little swim jig that is not what I'm going to be throwing tomorrow for this. Uh, this, I think I'm going to switch over to, well, you know what, we'll get to that. First, let's talk about what I'm going to be taking with me. So four rods and a backpack, that's really all I have access to. I don't want to carry too much heavy equipment, I don't want to go too overboard, but at the same time I don't want to be missing anything too dramatic. So in my bag, I've got, as you can probably hear and see me pulling out, a ton of tackle. Just for some basic stuff for tomorrow, I've got some of my camera equipment in here, uh, just so you guys can come along with me. But tomorrow is a weight tournament, so I'm going to need my scale, make sure it's in there. Uh, I am going to want to check to make sure that I have some backup batteries for this, uh, just in case you run out of batteries or something happens have some backup batteries. I'm gonna be throwing those in here as well, just because I don't want any issues. Uh, but now, I'm going to pack this up with stuff that I need for tomorrow. Something I have with me every time I go out fishing is my frog box. I keep all of my frogs in here, including some of the live target little minnows. This small bag, little small little box, uh, is kind of my if I need stuff. I keep my terminal tackle in here, my slip sinkers, I keep my bullet weights, I keep um, my bobber stops, I keep my cutters, I also keep uh, some wacky worm rings, some, I mean literally all of like just small terminal tackle, all goes in this little box, I throw a couple rubber bands on it to make sure it doesn't pop open and bleed all over my bag, um, but this is like my small everything I need to go out just in case and catch a couple fish box. Next um, is an MTV Pro, Pro box. This is basically for me one of these. Uh, this has a whole bunch of compartments in it, but I don't like having all of my compartments in one box. So for in here, I actually keep all of my plastics. I've found out that over time, all of my plastics, if I leave them in a bag, inside of a bag, one of the bags pops open, they spill out, they're all over the bottom of my bag. But when I keep them in my MTP Pro box, they don't fall out, they don't get jacked up, I don't have anything to worry about. Uh, then the other two that I wouldn't normally take out with me, along with some swim baits, uh, those are gonna be another plan D situation if nothing else is happening. Uh, these two boxes are my crankbaits, my jerkbaits, 
and this is all top water. I've got multiple baits in these two boxes that are probably older than some of my viewers. They're 20 something year old lures. I've got actually two poppers in here that most of you probably have never even seen before. But these are original poppers from 20 something years ago. Uh, I've got them in blue and red uh, with a little bit of a white body. Uh, these tails used to be white from back in the day. They have thus turned color. But these are super duper subtle. I don't even know if you can find these anymore. I think these are wood. Um, but they're super duper subtle. And with my spinning rod, I can get these cast out pretty far and get a good bite on these still, still to this day. Um, and this is kind of one of my ace in the holes, if nothing else is working, lures. Uh, we're going to do a video with that, I think, one of these days, using one of my 20-year-old rods, 20-year-old reels, 20-year-old lure, just proving that old fishing still works. But I think we're in good shape here. So that is what I'm going to take. I'm literally taking just four rods, my terminal tackle that will fit in my backpack, and, the, and just a couple other small boxes of lures. Now, some backup baits that I'm going to be running are jigs, uh, spinner baits, maybe some of those small MEP spinners if things get really tough. Um, but I want to make sure I have all my bases covered. Uh, I know that this lake is hard to fish. It's not easy to fish from the bank. There's only a few places you can sneak in at. Uh, and with, I think there's almost 20 people signed up, I'm a little worried um, that people are going to start overcrowding each other and it's going to get a little intense. But, you know, this is like a group event, you know, everybody kind of knows everybody, but um, I, need to, uh, I need to make sure that we're in great shape for that. Next is to go to sleep, wake up, go fish the tournament. I gotta find one more lure for this other rod. The water's really dark. There's a lot of craziness going on. You'll have to see in the morning. Let's go. All right, guys. It is tournament morning, and this is a bank fishing tournament out here on Norman Lake. Whoo! Shotgun start. I'm literally going to the farthest spot away from where everyone is and where everybody else is fishing. Like I said, I did fish this body of water once before. And uh, as you can hear, I'm already out of breath because of how far I've had to go. <sighs> oh man. But my game plan looks solid. Nobody else has really planned to go this way from what I can see, which means I can fish this whole segment without interference. So, bonus points there. I am so out of shape. All right, let's get over to our spot and see if we can't catch a few of these bass that I know are sitting over there. All right, guys. So all this riprap, big, heavy rocks are what I'm gonna start fishing today. It's perfect. Gotta watch out for snakes though. That's him. That's a good one. Good enough. Seven. 
plan is in effect. Not in the mood to get a hook, so stop it. No way. Where's that at? Oh no. My number one weapon. I lost the hook. Wow. That sucks. There it is. The whole back end is gone. Um, okay, small. Two. Oh, really? Yeah. You? No. Not yet. <sighs> no, I got two though. Yeah? Oh boy. Alright, this is just gonna get ripped off. There we go. Soulless, bro. That's what they say. You mean you haven't heard? <laughs> okay. So unfortunately, all of my cameras died um, while I was at the fishing tournament here there on Norman Lake. So I didn't get final footage of the weigh-ins or anything like that. But good news is I ended up taking second. Uh, it was crazy day of fishing. Actually, there were only two fish completely caught after 9.30 in the morning. That is just astounding. The whole lake just shut down at some time around 8.30, 9 o'clock. So after my first two catches, that's really all there were. I had a few blow-ups, as you guys have seen, but that's where it ended. Um, I probably made three full laps around Lake Norman, and just really didn't even get any other bites except for a few on the top water near the riprap. I knew from practice that the riprap was gonna be my key to success. I had to get over there early, I had to try and get a few bites, and if it wasn't for that is there a spook breaking, which was my main game plan for going down those riprap, I feel like I actually had a chance of taking first. But the guy that did take first caught two really good sized fish early on, so we'll never know. It was an absolute blast for me. It was my very first bank fishing tournament. Um, I've done some other fishing tournaments, but number one, just truly bank fishing with a bunch of other people. It gets rather crowded rather quickly, and with the way that lake lines up, it's very difficult to fish. Some spots you're, very, you're forced far away from people because there's just little trails that go through this high reeds and stuff so you can get to the, river, to the actual uh, lake bank. But the whole riprap, and then one other small section on the side are the only places a group of people can kind of fish next to each other. Uh, right after I started catching fish, the riprap really got crazy. Everybody started going over there. I think people saw me catching fish, so of course they're going to head that direction in hopes to catch some. 
Uh, one of the other guys actually followed me down the riprap. I think he ended up getting one fish, um, but he fished that riprap really hard. Um, he must have realized my game plan and then kind of stuck to his guns on it. I moved around a little bit just trying to find another bite, but I just couldn't get one. Nobody could. The whole body of water just shut down. I don't think there's a ton of bass in that lake. Um, I think there's a decent population, but not a massive population. Not something that would support as many people as we had on that body of water. So nobody ended up with more than two fish, um, which is just crazy to me when we had a five fish limit. Uh, first place I believe had seven pounds. I had a little over four pounds, and or I think he had a little over six pounds or something like that. He had six or seven pounds. Uh, I had a little over four pounds, and third, fourth, and so on was super, super close, and I think there were five or six guys that didn't even catch a fish. Uh, the rules for this were very simple. You could only have, I believe it was over one pound was able to be counted, uh, so no actual length limit, more of a weight limit. Had an absolute blast, made a couple extra bucks, won a couple lures from the tournament, so I am super happy with that. Hopefully, I'll be doing more tournaments on this channel here for you guys with a bunch of other fishermen, hopefully from boats, but we will see. Uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, it is a pleasure fishing with you today. And until next time, guys, happy boozing.